Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Rosie. In this video, we will discuss some concepts about users and groups on Windows computers. A Windows computer can be a standalone system or be a part of a domain. By default, some users and groups exist. Additionally, the administrator can create and manage more users and groups. Information about the users and groups on a computer can be viewed from the local users and groups console. Every user and group is assigned a unique identifier referred to as security identifier. It is typically a long string with multiple values separated by hyphens. The S at the beginning of the string indicates that this is a security identifier. The revision portion indicates the version of the SID structure used. The next few items in the sequence contains information about the domain the SID is a part of. The final field, Relative Identifier, or RID, is the value that uniquely identifies a user or group. The RID value for user accounts is always above 1000. System accounts are assigned RID values below 1000. You can view the security identifiers assigned to users using this command. This is the SID of user 10. For default system users and groups, the security identifiers are predefined. You can follow along with the official documentation to know more about it. Now, let's talk about why a reverse engineer must know about users and groups on Windows computers. Every time a process is in execution, a token is created for it. This token contains information about the user that started the process. In some cases, malware samples steal or impersonate the token assigned to a process to gain higher privileges. Knowing how to examine the token assigned to a suspicious process is a good skill to have for a reverse engineer. How can this token be examined? Let's start with understanding some background information. Information about an active process is stored within the eProcess structure in kernel memory. This structure has a field containing token information. Here, the security identifier of the user that started the process is present. When examining token information, the goal is to retrieve the SID value. Information about the token is present as a structure with multiple fields. To view the SID, a subtraction between two values must be performed. I will demonstrate this using Windows Debugger. To fully understand why this subtraction must be performed, I encourage you to research about the entire token structure. First, we will view the token associated with a process started by the user. I will pick the command prompt application. Let's access the eProcess structure associated with it. Here is the token field. When I click on it, we can view the various fields in this structure. I will perform a subtraction operation between the object and reference count value. This task is using hexadecimal numbers and can be performed using Windows Debugger itself. This is the result. I will use this value to access the contents of the token structure, which in turn has multiple fields of information. The user and groups field contains the SID of the user that started the process. We can find the address to it. I will copy the value and use it as input to the SID command. This is the SID of the user that started the command prompt application. We can find the username SID mappings using this command. Now, let's try this task for another process. Here is the eProcess structure. Here is the token information. I will perform the subtraction. 
and access the contents of the token structure. Let's view the SID associated with this process. This SID corresponds to the local system account. I hope you have a good idea now about users and groups on Windows computers. I encourage you to research about security identifiers and examine process token information in Windows Debugger. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon!